I really enjoy investigation and going in depth and because it's slow, it allows me a lot of time. So it doesn't require me to come up with a solution right away. Research is not meant to be fast. Hi, my name is Monica Biagioli and I'm a senior lecturer. My role is really primarily focused on teaching here, to be honest, uh, but I work a lot on research. And for me, it's integrated with the teaching practice because the, the kind of work I do is about thinking and making and the integration of the two. So my area of research is um, design and arts-based methods applied in the organizational context. So what that would translate to, because that might sound like something that doesn't make any sense, is workshops, a lot of public workshops. Those workshops aren't necessarily about us delivering knowledge to people, but about creating spaces and creating um, engagement with people in a way that creates the knowledge. It's about really demonstrating that design and art are not just decoration, they are actually very functional in society and can really help in many different ways. So as a result of ongoing research, because research is a very slow burn, meaning things develop over time, there's a lot of chance involved in how things might evolve and organically, and in, in the case of the British Library project that I'm currently working on, that is what happened. What we ended up deciding was that um, what would be best for us to contribute as a course, I teach on the graphic and media design course, is um, a series of workshops. So rather than being involved in the exhibited items, we are involved in delivery of um, workshops to the library public in connection with an exhibition on um, 19th century newspapers. So the idea of that exhibition is to make 19th century newspapers relevant to a contemporary public that is not at all familiar with those formats. And there are so many variances, it's very interesting. So a lot of the work that they're doing is translating the information from those articles to information design pieces that are exhibited to make that information accessible to the public. And uh, so that's really been fun, developing ideas. We just had a, a pre-workshop workshop that we delivered to the British Library team at the British Library. Delivering it to the curators who know what they're talking about, who know the exhibition is one thing. Delivering it to a public who needs to feel somehow like they're brought into something. They, so we need to think about very slowly what the steps are in terms of engaging people. Because one of the key things we'd like to do is uh, reduce the fear of data in the general public and to actually let people know it's out there and you can interpret it because actually every time somebody writes an article that's precisely what they're doing. They're interpreting information, they're reconfiguring it, they're, they're doing sense making, they're, they're providing uh, a narrative and uh, that is actually something that everybody has a right to do. I'm working on something called the, the zine method, is something I developed over a very slow period of time in a collaborative way with researchers that I have an ongoing relationship of working with and so something like a zine which is a, it's, it's a term from the graphic arts and a zine is actually a multi-page uh, paper-based uh, usually uh, do-it-yourself DIY technique uh, way of creating uh, newspaper content. Anybody can do it and it can be distributed in any way. So it could be quite elegant and it could be very well produced or it could just be purely handwritten, photocopied and handed out. I think one of the most important things that has come out of uh, applying the method for me has been allowing people to deal with complex emotion, difficult emotion, things that you don't really maybe even want to admit to yourself. We, we can't lose that that understanding that when you make something you're actually by enacting it in real space in real time you are it's it's again feeding back to how you might feel about something and that you might reveal things as you touch things as you move things around that's part of a process so the thinking and making being very very closely aligned is something that we're very very good at I think the difficulty we have as a subject area is proving that. So a lot of the research that I'm interested in in terms of supervision would be how can we make the case for art and design to contribute in ways that are art and design based, not in ways that would be translated to scientifically based methods. So again, I believe in the design process and that's why, you know, for me it's quite important to demonstrate that design and art are not just 
the decorative end ending of something, but actually quite important in terms of processing and coming up with solutions.